so students last time i was talking to you about various kinds of security threats and uh, i think the last topic which i covered last time was breaches breaches i said is uh, a kind of security lapse in our network or in our system through which intruders or hackers can enter our system so whenever breaches happen then our data may be compromised or the environment in our system itself may get compromised and uh, apps may also get affected so up to that we have already discussed <coughs> continuing the same topic there are two terms which are very similar but not really identical one is information security and second is cyber security there are many common elements in them but they are not exactly identical so i would like to tell you now the difference between cyber security and information security when we use the word cyber security the word cyber comes from the word cybernetics cybernetics is the total word and cyber is actually a short form of cybernetics cybernetics is the science of automation and control systems so from that word cybernetics we have one more word called cyber space cyber space refers to the entire space notional space on the network on which we can visit a website we can download data we can make a profile and we can do things like that so the threats which are there in the cyber space and uh, we are trying to prevent those threats they are that activity is called cyber security so cyber security is that which deals with threats which come to us from the cyber space that means mostly they come from other devices or servers or from anywhere on the internet on the other hand when we talk of the term information security it deals more with the organizations policies which are framed for protecting our information and uh, what processes we use say for detecting an a breach or for uh, detecting a um, uh, corruption of the app or uh, detecting even things like bad sectors in the memory so what processes we use and in our organization what are the va various roles and responsibilities that we have allotted to the different uh, people for maintaining confidentiality of information maintaining availability of information and for integrity of the information all this when we talk about that is information security so these are the basic differences between cyber security and information security i would like you to write down a small para about each for your reference so first write about cyber security <coughs> note down cyber security deals with the dangers in cyber space dangers in cyber space cyber security professionals deal with 
prevention of active threats or advanced persistent threats within brackets apt next para information security prevention of active threats or advanced persistent threats advanced persistent threats within brackets apt then next para is about information security information security deals with data security it is handled by information security professionals who are responsible for policies processes organizational roles and responsibilities in order to assure in order to assure confidentiality integrity and availability of data and availability of data <clears throat> so writing is only up to this point now further explanation about information security it is said that information security data okay so writing is up to this only now further is explanation so just now you have written about information security information security has got five pillars well normally a room has four pillars but information security has five pillars note down the pillars of information security one identify one is identify second is protect protect third is detect fourth is respond and fifth is recover understood so five pillars are identify protect detect respond and recover now each of these terms has got lot of important meaning first is identify so if you want to implement information security in our organization you have to first identify what are our information resources where they are located and what kind of threat can damage this resource it is like saying suppose i have to do building security for a building it is necessary to know what is in the building where where a threat can happen where are the entry points we should know that no? similarly in information security also we start with identifying what are our information resources for example where is my data center in which devices is my data stored which data is stored in which device which is more vital for me which is less vital for me 
and for that device or for that information what can be the possible threats who can affect it when you identify the resources and the risks associated with each resource that is the first pillar this is a starting point for information security without this nothing further can be done second pillar is protect before a threat happens if you have identified the threat and if you can find a method by which that threat can be avoided then that is the best solution for example if you feel that somebody can manipulate this data then that can be prevented by maintaining proper encryption if you feel that somebody should be able should not be able to make any sense of this information even though he may be somehow able to download it then again the answer is to have a strong encryption system so you could make it a policy that our devices shall all have encryption all the files shall be kept in an encrypted state and without the the private key and the public key infrastructure being in place the data should not be accessible so when you do like that you are protecting the information <coughs> another method of <coughs> protecting your servers and your client machines could be installing firewalls installing firewalls in all the systems so that unauthorized access can be prevented so that undesirable kind of data packets are not able to enter our systems this is a prevention mechanism in the medical practice it is said that prevention is always better than cure in information security also prevention is the preferred method prevention is better than curing after the attack has happened the third pillar of information security is detect so with all our protective techniques some threats will always result in attacks why the, why it happens is because the cyber criminals like hackers they are also constantly learning they are also constantly trying to find out new techniques of impacting the information resources moreover they are also getting more advanced hardware and uh, faster net data networks they are also able to get that just as an ordinary citizen is getting so that being the case with all our protection initiatives some threats do get translated into actual attacks when this attack happens you must be able to detect it very simple thing let us say we have a website which we are using for communicating with our students if this website has been hacked will my system manager come to know immediately immediately mean means after how much time he will come to know that such and such an attack has happened or another thing could be let us say the network has suddenly suddenly developed a snag and uh, the speed has drastically done gone down the customers are facing lot of problem some of the customers may ra raise a customer complaint but everybody doesn't raise a customer complaint also they just get busy with something else now our managers our personnel who are who are responsible for maintaining information security they should come to know in the shortest possible time that so and so attack has happened 
this is the meaning of detect before you get a the ideal thing will be that even before you get a complaint from any customer or any user or before somebody else informs you that your system is down or your network is low or your website is defaced before anybody else comes to know our security personnel must come to know this is what we have to ensure in the third pillar called detect fourth is respond after you detect a breach after you detect a hacking you have to respond to that in the shortest possible time now think of a scenario that i have a security manager and the attack has happened let us say after midnight obviously at that time all the people will be sleeping so that means your response happens when tomorrow morning if the threat has happened say at 1 am 1 hour after midnight you will be setting right later you will be setting right the system maybe after another 8 or 9 hours now in offline business 8 9 hours is okay but when we are in the e-commerce scenario where sales are going on online the system being down for 8 or 9 hours means enormous impact tremendous loss under such circumstances how do you ensure that the response is fast the uh, if a crime happens <clears throat> and the police reaches after one day it is of no use by that time you cannot even find any evidence also evidence would have been wiped out information security is also like that when an attack has happened we must respond immediately at that time there is a possibility to do what is called cyber forensics the word forensic actually comes from police when a crime has happened they do forensic that means they try to get information like fingerprints left there or footprints when the criminal was running away in which direction he has gone all that they can collect that information if the response is absolutely fast delayed response <clears throat> wipes out lot of evidence so our information policies and deployment of people deployment of <clears throat> information security staff <clears throat> should be such that when a security threat happens we must be able to respond in the shortest possible time this is a vital requirement of information security and the fifth is recover the fifth pillar is recover recover simply means bring your system operating system applications and data to the same state in which it was just before the attack happened just before the attack happened now look at this scenario we are talking of a banking site banking website now a lot of people are doing transaction continuously they may be doing online purchases they may be doing funds transfers when a network fails suddenly it can so happen that a part of the transaction has been carried out but the transaction is not completed if it is an online purchase it can happen that the user has already entered the credit card details the user has entered the cvv number also received the otp entered the otp 
money will be debited immediately but will he get the goods because information has not reached the merchant when information has not reached the merchant the order will not be accepted goods will not be supplied service will not be provided so this is a transaction which has happened partially half of the transaction is over remaining half is not over now when such a thing has happened recovery will require what recovery means we should try to bring the state of the system to that time which is just before the attack has happened so for that there can be two methods there are actually two methods one is called a roll back second is called a roll forward if from your log files you are able to get the information that what should have been the un unfulfilled part of the transaction if that information has been completely captured in the log files but not actually implemented then the right thing to do is fast forward sorry roll forward if that information is not available in the log files also then the only solution is roll back if roll back happens then the money which has been debited to the user's account has to be refunded back preferably it should be refunded very fast but it is never instant it takes some time if it is a very efficient website it could be within less than 1 hour if it is not such an efficient website it may take 2 or 3 days so that is roll back roll back means half of the transaction which has been completed we are taking it back in time so that as if the transaction has not started at all but if my log file has captured the information for the remaining part of the transaction that is fully available with me then roll forward is a better option now roll forward will happen how suppose the merchant details and the merchant's account number to which the amount is to be transferred that has already been received in the log file then when i detect that this transaction is half done i can go roll forward roll forward means i can now ensure that the credit entry takes place if that happens the transaction has been completed although it has not been completed instantly with some delay it has been completed so i have seen on many good websites where when the transaction fails they are able to roll forward within a short time one very good example is amazon and second is airtel airtel wallet airtel wallet when your transaction fails generally it will not be rolled back they are able to capture the information and roll it forward so also amazon but everywhere it is not like that um, the worst i came across is irctc the railways website anything happens on irctc if the transaction fails no roll forward happens at all always it is roll back that means you have to wait for 3 4 days to get back your money nobody wants to wait because if you are in a hurry to book the ticket you will somehow book it so you will spend double the amount book the ticket then after 3 4 days the original amount comes back now this is not a very good system because they have not been able to implement a roll forward so this is what we mean by recover or if it is a web page or website which has been hacked roll back will mean there there is no roll forward the only option is roll back so there what roll back will mean is that means i restore that web page or pages of that website to the original state 
which was there just before the start of the attack. So this is how you have to understand five pillars of information security, right? Next we talk about firewall. Actually in between some more topics are there. I will come back to those topics later. But now, right now I have a very interesting topic which is very useful. So the next topic which I am talking about is firewall. Firewall is a very important mechanism for protection. Firewall is not for detection or recovery, for that other systems are there. But the initial security, that means after my information resources have been identified and I have decided to protect them very nicely, one of the good mechanisms is firewalls. Many operating systems actually, they provide their own firewalls also. For example, Windows. Windows has Windows Defender. Windows Defender provides its own firewall. But it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily depend upon that. You can decide to have an independent firewall also. For example, from an antivirus site, I can download a firewall and then I can deactivate Windows Defender and that firewall will start working. So, option is ours. Whether to use the Windows Defender firewall or some other firewall. But firewall is one mechanism which is for very good protection. From where does this name firewall come? Well, the idea is like this. <clears throat> Suppose there is a big building and if the building catches fire, the fire tries to spread from one room to another. Naturally, no? well, how it spreads is, let us say this room is on fire, this wall becomes very hot. When this wall becomes very hot, the fire starts in the next room. When fire is in the next room, it will spread to the next room again. So within no time, you will find that the whole building is on fire. Now you may decide that I don't want this. When the fire accident happens, the fire should remain localized. So in your building, you may decide to build say four or five firewalls so that if fire happens in one area, it will restrict only to that area. Now this was done historically also. How it is done is, that wall is made with an insulating material in the middle. So wall will have actually two layers. And in between, there will be an insulating material. The insulating material can be asbestos for example, or any other insulating material, which will prevent heat from going from here to there. If you don't want to use an insulating material, there is a very simple method also. Have an air gap of something like one foot in the middle. One layer of the wall is here, another layer of the wall is here, but the walls are not joined together. There is a gap of one foot there. This will also provide an insulation because air will not get that much heated where the heat can transfer to the other room so much that the other room starts burning. So such walls were called fire walls. This was in building, in buildings. The same term, firewall, it has been used in information security also. So here the aim is that the threat which is coming from outside should not be able to enter my system. So that is called a firewall. So students, Firewalls are of many types, several types, because we can classify them on the basis of 
so many parameters. So how we can classify firewalls? Note down a few classifications. One, hardware firewall or software firewall. Hardware firewall or software firewall. Second classification is default permit or default deny default permit or default deny the third method is stateless or stateful stateless or stateful then the fourth method is circuit level or proxy firewall proxy firewall etc like proxy p r o x y and then you write etc because there are some types of firewalls other than this also i will be talking to you about those also first let us see these major differences so first firewall is first firewall classification is is it a hardware firewall or a software firewall actually in in the beginning most of the firewalls were hardware firewalls in hardware firewall the firewall is installed on a device on the hardware of a device which is separate from my normal system my normal system is here i will install the firewall on a separate hardware and my data passes through that when we do that then it is called a hardware firewall because it is located not in my system it is located in a separate hardware and my connection to the network goes through that hardware that is also a computer system only but its job is only specific job it is not doing any computing it is not doing any word processing or spreadsheets or nothing like that that system is dedicated to only providing firewall and doing nothing else so naturally the performance will be excellent na no? it doesn't slow down my system my system works perfectly because it is working independently the hardware function the firewall function is done by a separate system by separate hardware so this provides good efficiency but that means you have to spend extra you need to invest in a different machine so nowadays most of the firewalls which we implement they are not hardware firewalls they are software firewalls software firewall is in my own system on which i am doing my normal work in that itself the firewall is also created so this firewall keeps on looking at the traffic data traffic and actions and then it provides security to my information resources so first classification or i would say first method of classifying firewalls is is it a hardware firewall or a software firewall second method default permit default deny default permit means by default everything is permitted till i stop something so i may say all data traffic is permitted except that which comes from my enemy country so if a http request is coming from pakistan stop it if it is coming from any other country it is permitted or i may say if it is a request coming on ftp protocol file transfer protocol it should not be allowed 
because I don't want unnecessary files here, malicious files here, but everything else is allowed. Or I may say, if the traffic is on telnet, where somebody is trying to log in from outside, then that should be denied, everything else is permitted. When we take this kind of security policy, this is called default permit. Default permit means everything is permitted except that which I specifically deny. Now this will be very good when you want to stop, let us say, pornographic sites. Pornographic sites can be identified. So I will say all traffic from pornographic sites shall be denied. Everything else is permitted. The second method of classifying firewalls is default deny. In default deny, our philosophy is stop everything except those things which I permit. So, in first case, my list will be those kinds of traffic which is to be denied. In the second case, default deny, I will specify a list where permission is allowed. So these are the two exactly opposite methods of implementing a firewall. Windows has got a Windows Defender. That works on which method? Default deny. So everything it denies except that which I permit or which is permitted by Microsoft. Otherwise everything is denied. So this is second method of classifying the firewall. The third level method. Okay, before I go to the third method, I have to say on what parameters we either permit or deny. So, for denying and permitting, there can be various fields, various parameters. Some of the parameters write down. Okay, the title for this will be access list control. Access list control ALC access list control so this can have many parameters on which we can either permit or deny so some of these parameters are source address source address that means data is coming from which IP address so that is a source address Second, source port, source port, P-O-R-T port, because different kinds of traffic come from different ports. HTTP comes from one port, Telnet comes from another port, SMTP comes from another port. These are all ports which are made by the software in the sending system. You don't see them as a separate connectors. They are not, port is not a connector. Port is a port on the board itself through which that data is coming. So first was source address, second is source port, third is destination address. Destination address, fourth is destination port. The next is protocol, protocol through which the data is coming. So protocol can be FTP protocol, UDP protocol, etc. And based on the parameters of this access list, you can specify either permit or deny. So today's class we will stop.